Hello, hello and welcome, welcome back to Space Engineers on the Xbox, on the Series X for the first of many tutorials involving the AI functions in the game, or rather the Automatons update. And this is going to cover the flight block, you'll see this here, the AI flight move. And this one is all about the AI recorder brackets task block. Now you might see that I have some waypoints here, starting at waypoint zero, all the way to waypoint 16. So this is a very basic setup, but before I get into the waypoints, I want to talk about the blocks themselves. These two blocks here the task and move you'll see that on the small grid and on the large they have no way to fail to put them in the correct orientation you have a giant f for front text on the back that says rear panel a left and a right face these as I've done, and you won't go far wrong. In fact, you won't go wrong at all. What you will go wrong with, though, is where you position them on the ship if you're creating a ship that's going to dock. You see my connector here. This thing is along the spine of the ship. So if I want my AI recorder task block correctly placed i would need to remove this connector build some blocks or a sort of um, further extension of the ship and slap this ai recorder task block right behind that connector as close to it as possible this ensures if you're doing a docking system that your recorded path is going to be as close to the connector on the other end as possible now if we take a look at these blocks by jumping into the cockpit going into the control panel moving up first of all to the AI flight move this replaces your autopilot really um, or rather it it works in conjunction with the AI recorder task block which replaces your autopilot to, from the remote control the remote control block is still used but it's used to control ships now more than to give them any kind of autopilot function. You should be using these new blocks. And on these new blocks, we have the good old collision avoidance and precision mode. Now, precision mode, if I turn it off, I'll show you what precision mode does exactly. You could set the speed limit. You could set the minimal altitude you want this to fly at. And you want it at zero if you're doing a landing system or a docking system that comes down onto a connector underneath the ship. You can align it to planetary gravity and you can have the max pitch and roll angles set as you want. Now, if you've got a grid that can't provide a decent level of thrust in all directions, you probably want your max pitch and roll angle to be like 10 degrees you don't want it to go too far off kilter with the ai otherwise that grid is just going to smash into the ground so that's something to remember but the most important thing here is that you can toggle collision mode now this is still um not as accurate as it could be i'm hoping keen continues to work on collision avoidance because it still has some issues and you need to turn this off if you're making a docking system because it is just not going to like going anywhere near a grid to come to land it will attempt to avoid the grid and or voxels around it so you need to turn collision avoidance off i'll be covering that on a separate actual docking tutorial because i want to break these down into 10 or maybe 15 minute videos and put them all in a playlist for you on the channel 
um, which I'll start with this one on the automatons update. So that is the AI flight move. It functions a lot like the old remote control, save for the fact that it works in conjunction with the new AI blocks, which I will be going over. Starting with the task block, one of the most versatile blocks used to move your new drones and or ships around a predetermined path. Now you can see here you have play, a repeat the path and waypoints. And on these waypoints you could set up actions. You can also activate show path on HUD, show selected points, record and you can set distance and minimal distance you can add a reference beacon we'll cover that in a later tutorial involving this block and if you want to show these paths like i'm doing you need to ensure that you have your block set to show on hud then in info you need to make sure that you've got show all AI functions enabled. And when you've got that, you'll be able to see your AI path now, or rather your, your block path. And this point here, followed by every other waypoint, is generated by the AI update or the automatons update, the flight recorder itself, the task block here, not this so this could actually go anywhere on the ship as long as it is placed as so but this if i'm going to use it as a docking feature like i said needs to go right behind that connector or if there was a connector underneath it needs to be atop that connector so that it knows exactly where it's going to put itself and as you can see it's generating this waypoint just above the L and the R. And what I've done here is I've actually put the waypoints onto the D-pad, or rather the add waypoint function, so that when I fly around, if I go back into the cockpit, you'll see what I've done is I've created several shortcuts. So by holding down the D-pad, you can open up the toolbar config menu on the controller and select the block you want. In my case, it was AI Recorder Task Play on off. So I went to AI Recorder Task, pressed A, went to Play on off and selected that. This selected the action here. I then have Add Waypoint, Collision Avoidance on off, and AI flight move, AI behavior on off. When I activate the play function on my path recorder, this is going to replay from zero the AI path that this vessel will follow or the recorded path. So if I go back to my next page and I activate play and then turn on the AI function, you'll see that my ship is going to roll a bit as it gets there. This is because the AI recorder is running with the flight move block. And as I told you, it's able to do a 45 degree um, pitch and roll. So if we want to smooth that out, we go to our AI flight move again. And we turn our roll angle to zero. And we don't really want our pitch angle to change overly much, but we can leave it at 45 at the moment. 
Now, if I go through this again, turn on my thrusters, unlock that, turn off the AI so I can actually fly the ship again, take it there, turn it back on. You'll see that now it will attempt to get to the point as closely as it can and adjust its positioning so that it can follow these points. Now, this isn't precision mode, so it's basically going to move a lot quicker when it gets to 15. What happens there is that it turns off the thrusters, which is why it drops that last little bit. And at 16, it locks the landing gear. And that's a fairly simple way of doing things. And this is what you want to start with, with these blocks to learn how they work. So you'll see here that at waypoint 15, I've selected that and I've set up the action. From there, and I've gone to groups and I've selected my prospector thrust and I've turned it off. That shuts down the thrusters and then the next waypoint turns the lock on the landing gear to on. So that is how you can actually make a ship come in to land from wherever I am on the map. So for instance, um, if I am, let's say, let's put this back like this, go to take off. And then scoot over here a little, my little ship and I've done some stuff over here and I cannot be bothered to fly back now bear in mind that I am going to collide with any voxels and or grids in autopilot because I don't have collision on so what we need to do is just go to my autopilot activate these two and then the ship will only move at 10 because I've got the speed set to 10 on the flight move block. What we also need to remember as well, what I, what I need to remember to tell you is that you can't show these points unless you've actually got an antenna on your grid. Once you've got an antenna on your grid, like the uh, sensor ranges and so on, you can see these AI path points. And so you don't... Also, you don't want to go above 10 when you're doing complicated docking manoeuvres or landings. You want it to be potentially as slow as possible. And what you can do is if you have a static fixed base and you know that that's not going to move, you can create a waypoint and you can use a AI um, basic block that's not a task record block. I'll cover those in a later tutorial because... I don't want this to get too long in the tooth. What that will do is use the autopilot function to go from A to B much quicker. And once it gets to that waypoint, say like zero, you can actually have it turn on your task record block, play the landing path. So you can actually have these blocks triggered off waypoints to give you control over the system you want to use to bring a ship like this into land so now it's reached that point it'll move from waypoint to waypoint 
again, it doesn't have precision mode on, so it will slowly move if it has precision mode on. It will try to get to the next waypoint as accurately as possible. So to give you an idea of what that looks like compared to um, no precision mode, we'll go on this. We'll turn off my autopilot again, put the thrusters back on, unlock the landing gear, take this off. And then all we're going to do is just put these two back on. And now you'll see that this ship will fully rotate or should fully rotate when it gets to zero and then it will reverse to find its way. And now it will move much slower from waypoint to waypoint because it is now attempting to hit each individual waypoint using precision mode as accurately as it can. As I said during this, though, if you've got grids in the way, you need to ensure you have a decent flight path to that grid. And so I'm going to show you at the end of this video, though, rather than the beginning, how I've got these waypoints here set up. These aren't automatically recorded. These are recorded manually. So there you go. It lands, turns off the thrusters, and locks the gear. Uh, before this update, this would have been fairly tricky to do on console. Um, PC had scripts. Now we have these blocks. And in conjunction with the event controller, you can do some pretty cool things. Okay, so let's go back for the final bit of this into the task block and just completely wipe out all waypoints. No more waypoints. So turn off the control, go to the thrusters, activate the ship, and let's bring her up in the air. And so now we go across to this page and we press up on the D-pad. You'll see we have a zero. If we fly a few more meters, press up on the D-pad, we have a one. A few more meters, a two, then a three. Then we press B, a few more meters, a four, a five, a six, a seven, an eight. A nine, a ten, an eleven, a twelve, over thirteen, and then slowly fourteen, and we have fourteen waypoints that this can follow. And what we can do now is test it. So we take off again, we go on on and our autopilot recorded path should play as I've set it up and this way you can use this to add accurate paths to drones for when you want them to come down onto connectors or onto any other docking device you may have. And you can use these waypoints to trigger actions and other blocks to create more complex systems. But to begin with, you just want to play around with this. I will actually cover in the next video how to make one of these blocks bring a drone down on top of a connector and get it to lock. And you'll see the reason I turn the thrusters off, if you've noticed, is the ship doesn't quite come down onto its 
14, it's still hovering. So it doesn't come all the way down to the ground. So those landing gear there are not in a lock state. If you see at the bottom there, it says unlocked. So we can't lock them because it's not ready to lock. We have to turn the thrusters off and then lock them. So as our last little bit of this, we go to record a task. We go all the way down to our waypoints and we pick waypoint 13. We come down onto set of action. We go to groups. We go to our thrusters. We turn them off. Then we come to waypoint 14. We go to set of action. We go to our groups. We go prospect to gear and we lock. And then we turn off that, thrusters on, gear on, up we go, autopilot active, and our ship will now go from point to point until it reaches our last two waypoints. And if you want to know what it's doing at any time, you can go into the cockpit, you can go to your AI flight move block, and you'll see that both the flight move and the task block are telling you what they're doing. There you go. And again, because it's got precision mode on, it's going to take a lot longer. But you want precision mode on as you come to dock. And you certainly want collision avoidance off as well. Otherwise, it's going to have no real way of doing things. Now, that dropped a bit hard. So probably what we want to do is set up some more waypoints, which you can do easily enough by just adding them and deleting 14 so you can add a, a point and you can move points around in the list but that is your basic look at the flight move and ai task i'll be covering in the next video how to use this ai task with just a couple of waypoints to move a drone from the sky down onto a connector and get it to lock there's a couple of things you can do uh, to make it work a lot better and i'll go over all of that in the next video there you go for your first automatons retail video block edition look or whatever you want to call it words are a bit tricky at the moment um we suffered a loss in the family my dad's um, beloved jack russell of 10 years um, old died unexpectedly on friday in very um nasty circumstances i won't go into detail but it was uh, not something i would wish on my worst enemy however this is all about space engineers and a load more to come thank you very much for liking subscribing being with me supporting me as we move towards the three years of content for space engineers on the xbox on this channel as of the 27th of this month brilliant and as i hit 2000 subscribers eventually i am releasing along with paul the map with the all-terrain armored transport from star wars the atst and anything else that paul feels will fit in until then though stay safe take care have fun enjoy the game keep on creating keep on contacting me in the comments and so on and so forth i'm happy to try and answer questions as long as they're not server related or anything to do with scripting because on the xbox we just can't do it so i don't cover it bye for now